Welcome to my messy studio, everyone. My name is Mark, and I'm an artist and an art professor. And in this mini lesson, I'm going to show you an unusual technique that combines pen and watercolor. Now, you might be wondering what's so unusual about combining pen and watercolor when it's done all the time. Well, the unusual thing is that in this technique, we use watercolor in our pens instead of ink, blending the two techniques to create a completely new and exciting way of working. Let me show you how this works. Any dip pen will work for this, but because watercolor pigments are usually larger than the ones found in ink, you want to use a nib with good flow and a tip that's not too narrow, something closer to a medium. For this purpose, I'm using the commonly available drawing nib, the Hunt Globe 513 EF. To load the pen with watercolor, all you have to do is create a wash with a brush and use it to load your pen. Give the pen a slight shake to shake off the excess and it's ready to go. Now I can adjust the color and value of the lines instantly with no need to mix up washes ahead of time. I recommend having a test sheet to check the color of your lines before applying them to your drawing, but with time I think you'll find that this is actually a very easy technique to control and you'll gain confidence to go directly into your drawing. In this demonstration, I'm working on Stonehenge Legion paper, a multimedia paper that takes both pen and watercolor relatively well. I've drawn in the head in graphite and indicated the shape of the shadows and the location of the highlights, just as I would in a watercolor sketch. The process is actually very similar to watercolor technique in the order in which you do things, but I recommend making your color mixtures more saturated than if you're working with washes, since this technique is linear and the hatch marks will leave white shining through everywhere. My initial skin tone is a fairly bright mix of alizarin and yellow ochre, which may have been too bright if I was working with washes, but here works just fine. As far as hatching technique, any one will work, but in this case I'm using cross contour hatching to reinforce the forms and give my drawing a greater sense of volume. Since it's so easy to shift colors with this technique, I can also at this point drop in a little bit of alizarin here and there in areas where the skin tone is redder. You can get as complex as you want at this stage, or keep it simple and add color complexity later. It's really up to you. After I've covered up the lighter areas, I mix up a shadow color and go over the shadows. I'm using a mixture of ultramarine blue and alizarin with a touch of burnt sienna to knock down the intensity of the purplish color. Before I show you the last steps, allow me a brief moment to announce my new online workshop called Sketching People in Pen and Watercolor. Last week's workshop was a stunning success and sold out, but I have another date this coming weekend that still has a bunch of spots available. This fast-paced, information-dense, three-hour online class will teach you simple, effective strategies that will help you draw people in pen and ink and watercolor. Please visit my website for more information, and if you can't make this date but are still interested, leave a comment expressing your interest and I'll consider adding additional dates. Okay, back to your regularly scheduled programming. Once I've established the general shadow colors, I can start adding contrast in the form of coarse shadows and reflected lights. Again, the big advantage of this technique is that I'm not limited in my color choices in any way and can make appropriate color adjustments, making the coarse shadows more neutral, for example, and the reflected lights more red and saturated. After adding color complexity and volume to the shadow, I can go back to the lights and use a light blue to create halftones, which help the lights transition into shadow and make the skin tones look more varied and realistic. Here is the final drawing. I think this strange hybrid of watercolor and pen has a lot of potential and can be used in a number of different ways, including in combination with standard watercolor technique. I hope you found this short lesson useful, and if you did, hit subscribe and stay tuned to more content. And of course, please consider attending my workshop, which supports not only this channel, but my art making practice in general. Thanks for watching, and see you in my messy studio very soon. Bye bye.